at STS-127. I have a question from uh, two uh, young people from Calgary, Alberta, uh, Carter and Ali Langford. Uh, they'd like to know, Chris, uh, you understand, because you're from Maine originally, that uh, Thanksgiving in Canada is in October and not in November. So they were asking if you will have a Thanksgiving meal and what's your favorite food? My my uh, my tastes ha don't haven't really changed in, on any of my missions. The things I don't like on Earth, mushrooms, I still don't like up here, and uh, uh, I I'll always love ice cream. I'll always love homemade uh, dishes right out of the oven and the smells that go along with it. So I'm really missing the smells of cooked food. It, it doesn't matter to me exactly what it is I'm about to eat, but it just when you have that that the smell and the anticipation of a great great meal, it it's it's just a wonderful thing. Um, I will not have Thanksgiving meal up here. I'll be home in time uh, for the, the U.S. version of that. And, uh, and that is one of the things I'm very much looking forward to is a turkey cooking and all of those smells and the preparation that goes into it uh, and enjoying that time with, with my family. So uh, that's one thing I'm very much excited for. People are very conscious that uh, you are on board a scientific laboratory and that you're conducting scientific experiment that tells us more about ourselves so we can bring back that knowledge to Earth. I have uh, Chris McDonald from Halifax, Nova Scotia, who's wondering, uh, from your perspective, Chris, now after a veteran of two mission, more than 365 days in space, what is the most important thing that you have learned out of the missions that you've made, the experiments you've conducted, uh, and, and what does it mean? It's a profound question for our future? That is a deep and profound question. And interestingly enough, as the experiments are con being conducted while we're on board, we don't really know that much of, of the, the results and the outcome. Now, Kate might. She's pretty tied in and dialed into all the sci scientific side of it. Um, but I, I think, I, I'm with Kate, I think the biological uh, uh, experiments that are, that are going on are the most fascinating because, uh, A, we're participating in them. It's, it's us in, very much involved with it. And they directly impact and support uh, life on Earth as well as future exploration. So those, uh, the, the cardiac things, the DNA sequencing, all of those I find uh, pretty exciting. I had never, un unlike Kate, I, I I think the last time I ever touched a pipette was like in freshman chemistry class. And so it was really fun for me to to use a pipette and do the, the steps involved with the DNA sequencing. Uh, I learned a lot uh, of the process myself as, as I was doing it. So so that, that's, that's been really fun to be a part of. Uh, and, and thankfully, Kate kicked it off several years ago, and she'll continue with it. And she will. And I think that what you're doing really right now is paving the way for future humans to undertake longer missions. Uh, uh, this is uh, the 20th anniversary coming up in two weeks of uh, uninterrupted presence of human beings in space from different countries, uh, from different culture. And this is an enormous achievement in itself. And thank you for what you do. Kate, uh, I know that you've done this before. But another question we're getting, and we get a lot of this, is, is uh, of course, looking out this incredible window uh, that you have on the Earth. Uh, on your first mission, you took pictures, and I remember listening to you uh, describing your experience. But what are you looking forward? Uh, can you? And people are wondering, uh, in particular, Anne Doan from British Columbia, do you see uh, uh, things that affect us on the ground, pollution, wildfires? hurricanes? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, certainly, looking out the window is one of the most surreal and sublime experiences we can have up here. Um, and it's actually, to get through my work day, I have to kind of stay away from the windows because it's so amazing. You get sucked in, and uh, you'll go full orbit around the Earth 90 minutes later, and then 
uh, somebody's calling you because you've forgotten to do your work tasks. So, <laughs> so sometimes we'll look out that we'll get up early uh, in the morning, for example, on the weekend, and we take a lot of pictures. Um, it's amazing what we can see from up here. It's also nice sometimes just to float around the earth and observe without even the camera in front of you. We were talking about that at dinner the other night with our Russian colleagues just to take it in yourself. Uh, we can see an amazing amount of things that affect the planet from this vantage point. So one of the things that was the most striking to me the first time was actually watching weather systems move across the globe and how interconnected they are. So you'll wake up in the morning and you'll watch your local weather and your local news, but you can actually see when you do an orbit around the Earth that some pattern that's up around Europe is going to get to North America a few days later. And so you can you can basically see the jet stream. You can see uh, hurricanes start to develop off of the coast of Africa, and you can watch them as they head towards uh, the continental United States. So certainly we do see those big weather events. Um, we can see flooding through taking uh, pictures with a really high resolution lens on the camera. And we actually do that to help out uh, folks. So there's a really neat international effort that will mobilize a lot of different space assets. Uh, for example, there's flooding in Bangladesh and, and we get that message right away and we take pictures and, and help folks that are trying to recover from that. Uh, we can definitely see wildfires. Uh, we can see dust storms moving across the Atlantic. And I think pretty much every, every astronaut agrees that the most striking thing that we see is a very fragile layer of atmosphere above our Earth. And, and we get this sense that, you know, it's, it's a big planet, but it's not protected by a lot, and it's really up to us to take care of it. And it's indeed very interconnected. We see it now with this virus who has spread throughout the planet, does not know any borders, does not know any timeline, and is affecting us all, and it's together that will fight it and vanquish it. Uh, I believe I'm out of time already. Uh, I cannot thank you again uh, so much. I am so glad, Chris, we had a chance to connect. And Kate, all the best. Chris, uh, uh, to you, Anatoly and Ivan, safe return to Earth. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in person when that is possible again. And uh, Kate, have the best of mission. Uh, my salutations to Sergey and Sergey. I know the change of command is uh, is uh, next uh, tomorrow. So all the best to you and uh, actually to everybody listening, uh, to the folks at Mission Control, to the people from NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, European Space Agency, Japanese Space Agency, and the Russian Space Agency. Congratulations, 20 years of uninterrupted presence of human beings in space. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, an amazing feat and it's preparing uh, for life on Earth better. Thank you again. Thank you, Julie. Well said and wonderful to talk to you. Take care. All the best. And I'll see
there looking at a live view of the uh, Russian Mission Control, where the team there is overseeing the preparations for the undocking of the MS-16, now in its last few hours at the International Space Station, before it undocks and makes, it way, makes its way back to the Earth with NASA astronauts Chris Cassidy, Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin, and Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner on board. Good afternoon and welcome now to the International Space Station Flight Controller. The team here is also working, uh, just coming in for their shift and beginning to oversee some of those preparations as well. The team is uh, now getting ready for the 3.10 p.m. Central Time undocking of Cassidy, Evanition, and Wagner. And I'm Brandy Dean. The crew has already said uh, the main part of their farewells. They're now getting ready to get inside the, co the uh, their Soyuz docked to the Poisk module on the space station. And that is the next step on a checklist that will lead them to a landing in Kazakhstan at 9.55 p.m. Central tonight. TD, do you have the uh, change of command ready? This was for Chris Cassidy, who has been commander of the International Space Station and Expedition 63 since April, to hand the space station reins over to Expedition 64 commander Sergei Ryzhikov and change of command ceremony that took place yesterday afternoon. In case you missed it live, we have some video of that ceremony to play for you here next. <laughs> Welcome aboard the International Space Station to the Expedition 63 to 64 crew change of command. Uh, I'm NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy here, uh, and with with all all six of us, um, it's an honor to be with this event with you guys right now. You know, Expedition 63 has gone by super fast. We we joke around that there's only Mondays and Fridays, and it's a big blur of time between. And uh, when we started the mission, the pandemic on Earth was just starting, and now we are returning to Earth and, and our, our fellow crewmates here had to train through those those six months. Our time on board has been very interesting. We've had um, uh, some time as a three-person crew. We had some time as a six-person crew, both at the beginning with Drew and Jessica and Oleg, and now with Sergey, Sergey and Kate. And then in the middle, we had a time as a five-person crew with Bob and Doug and we had the privilege of welcoming the, the SpaceX demo mission on board the International Space Station. Sprinkle in there some spacewalks and some uh, progress cargo vehicles and some American cargo vehicles and some crazy situations with the space station systems. Uh, it's just been an incredible six months of our lives. But experiences are nothing without the people that you enjoy those experiences with. And I must say it's been Really an honor to be with my friend Tolia and Yvonne. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better team of people to be here with. And when we had just a crew of three, we spent several cozy days in just the service module, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. I also want to give a shout out, as I mentioned, to, to Drew, Jessica, and Oleg. It was great to be with them. Bob and Doug, certainly we had two wonderful months. And then this week has gone by super fast with Sergey, Sergey, and Kate. Thank you for being part of it with us. And so uh, with that, we have this small tradition where there's a key to the International Space Station, which didn't exist when I was here seven years ago. I don't remember this, but now we have this, and I think it's very cool. It, it symbolizes <laughs> it symbolizes the, it, the, it's a, the tool that we use on the Russian uh, hatches to open and close the hatches and it's a very appropriate key of the space station it symbolizes the the uh, the camaraderie that we have between our all of the space agencies and uh, Sergey it's with great pleasure and honor that I present you this key and command of the International Space Station congratulations thank you, thank you. and thank you very much it's a great day, it's an unforgettable event, and uh, this key reminds me a uh, time when I was a pilot and we 
kept uh, key of sky <laughs> and uh, now we uh, keep key of space and it's uh, very um, interesting very uh, honorable for me and um, uh, we are very happy to join our crewmates and left uh, this week together. And uh, our mission is going to be very uh, to have many events, many activity, and uh, we are ready to con continue tradition uh, to show uh, how on board uh, people have example um, for uh, for people on earth how we work together how we uh, help together and how we uh, like uh, uh, to be to be on board station so thank you very much whole ground team and we are looking forward to work with you upcoming six months. Thank you, Thank you very much, Houston. Uh, we, we appreciate your support, and uh, over to you. Station Houston, we are thrilled to be with you today as we mark the end of this amazing increment. Expedition 63, thank you for your hard work and accomplishments. You've all set an impressive example with your work ethic and dedication to the mission. Chris, Anatoly, and Yvonne, safe travels home tomorrow. And Sergey, Sergey, and Kate, we are looking forward to a great increment with working with you. That again was a recording of the hatch, uh, the change of command ceremony that took place yesterday, Tuesday afternoon, uh, when. Expedition 63 Commander Chris Cassidy handed over the key of the space station to the Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Ryzhikov. Ryzhikov will stay behind with astronaut Kate Rubens and cosmonaut Sergei Kuzkvirchkov once uh, Cassidy, Ivanishin, and Wagner leave today. You also heard there at the end some uh, some thanks from on behalf of the teams on the ground from the Capcom, Woody Hoberg. You're now seeing a live view inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room of the team that's going to be overseeing the operations here in Houston. Team is led tonight by Flight Director Chris Edelin with uh, Capcom Jay Marshke sitting at his side. And in Kazakhstan, a number of officials in vehicles are standing by in preparation for the landing. Cassidy, Ivanishin, and Wagner expect to touch down southeast of Jeskazgan in Kazakhstan at 9.55 p.m. Central or 8.55 a.m. local time there. Several of the 12 MI-8 helicopters have been deployed to various areas to await the landing. Eight are at the expected landing site and two more will be ready about uh, 250 miles away in an area where touchdown would occur if a ballistic entry occurred. The final two helicopters are going to be loitering midway between those two sites, and we're, of course, not expecting a ballistic entry, but we, all are, we are always prepared for one just in case. And the weather forecast is looking good for today. Cool and breezy at the landing site with temperatures around 45 degrees and a few clouds at 5,000 feet as well as sc scattered clouds at 20,000 feet. The winds out there are going to be out of the west, coming in at 14 knots, and visibility should be about six miles or more at the time of landing. Station Moscow on Street to Ground 1 regarding COM config. Go ahead. Sergey, this is Alexei. Uh, I actually was not your instructor on Iridium. So now regarding the configuration, the configuration is as follows. Could you please open radiogram 7126, perform step 5. First, 
um, the deactivation of VHF2 as band relay mode. And then after step five, uh, repeat step one of the radiogram in full, radiogram 7126. Copy. In work, I uh, will perform step number five of the radiogram 7126. Okay, yes, once again, step five and then step number one. Copy. Five and one. Copy that. Again, here on the ground, everyone is getting into place for the upcoming 9.55 p.m. Central landing today. But uh, on orbit, the crew has to get into their vehicle and close the hatches between themselves and the rest of the space station. That's scheduled for 3.10 p.m. Central time, a little less than 30 minutes from now. Although that uh, timing can uh, fluctuate a little bit as the crew moves through their steps. At the moment, the two crews still have a few minutes together. Casti, Evanition, and Wagner will be leaving behind their crewmates of the past week. That is Expedition 64 Commander Sergei Rizhikov and Flight Engineer Sergei Kudskirchkov, both of Roscosmos, as along with NASA astronaut Kate Rubens. Those three will be uh, having the space station to themselves until next month when four new crew members will be launching from Florida in a SpaceX Crew Dragon. They'll be joined by Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker of NASA, along with Suichi Noguchi of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. That'll be the first regular operational flight for a Crew Dragon, following up on the successful flight of the Demo-2 mission this summer, which brought Doug Hurley and Bob Bank into the space station to spend two months as part of the Expedition 63 crew. That was just one of the highlights of the Expedition 63 mission. In addition to that, Crew Dragon, Cassidy, Evanition, and Wagner welcomed three cargo spacecraft, a Russian Progress, a Northrop Grumman Cygnus, and a Japanese HTV module, as well as the Soyuz that carried up Rubens, Ryzhikov, and Kudskvirchkov to the space station last week. Casadini's crewmates also said goodbye to five visiting vehicles, including the Crew Dragon, that uh, HTV that uh, they were there for the arrival of, and the preceding Progress and Cygnus vehicles, as well as the Soyuz that delivered back to Earth the crewmates they briefly shared the space station with after arrival, Andrew Morgan, Jessica Mir, and Oleg Skropochka. Cassidy also took part in four spacewalks during his time at the space station, heading out of the Quest airlock along with Bob Bankin for a total of 23 hours and 37 minutes. Combined with the spacewalks he conducted on his previous missions, STS-127 and Expeditions 35 and 36, he spent a total of 54 hours and 51 minutes spacewalking on a total of 10 spacewalks. That leaves him tied for the most spacewalks conducted by a U.S. astronaut and a number nine on the all-time spacewalking list. Following his landing today, Cassidy will have spent a total of 378 days in space over the course of three trips to space, which will put him in the fifth place for time in space among U.S. astronauts. His crewmate, Anatoly Venetian, has also made three trips to the space station, but since all three of his were long-duration missions, he'll be landing with a total of 476 days in space, earning him the 25th spot for time in space among all astronauts. And Ivan Wagner will wrap up his first space flight with 196 days just for this mission.
As we said, the crew today is wrapping up 196 days in space for the Expedition 63 mission today. It started uh, back in April, on April 9th. 2020 with the launch of the Soyuz MS-16 carrying up Cassidy, Evanition, and Wagner. And we have a replay of that for you here next on NASA TV. Main one. And liftoff. Cassidy, Evanition, and Wagner on their way to the International Space Station. Flight. All parameters are nominal. We confirm on board. All parameters are nominal. 20 seconds into launch. Uh, thrusters are working nominally. The crew is feeling fine. 30 seconds. All parameters for the vehicle are nominal. The crew is feeling fine. 40 seconds into flight. Thrusters are working nominally and the vehicle is nominal. Getting good continuous calls from the crew and the ground, everything with the vehicle looking nominal. The first stage powering the Soyuz upward, delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from the four strap-on boosters and that single core engine. Roll and your at 60 minutes into flight. The yaw pitch roll, the attitude or which way it's pointing, hearing all those parameters or the status of it nominal. 70 seconds into flight. So we'll see the engines cut off, and once the vehicle separates, it usually gives the crew a bit of a jolt. But then the Soyuz will be flying free. We see the third stage separating there. And we can see it dropping away now. Third stage separation confirmed. And congratulations, guys. You are in orbit. I am handing you over to the Mission Control Moscow. And as we can see on the video here, that solar array deployed. We have confirmation that the one on the other side also deployed, along with what's known as the appendages, all of the antennas, so the rendezvous and the communication antennas all deployed on the Soyuz spacecraft. That again was a uh, look back for at the April 9th launch of the Expedition 63 crew. They're now getting ready to wrap up that journey to space with a landing today at 9.55 p.m. Central Time in Kazakhstan. But first, they need to uh, close hatches between their Soyuz MS-16 and the International Space Station. That should be coming up here in about 20 minutes. We're listening to the crew walk uh, through their, their steps before that hatch is closed. After that, um, they'll be able to undock from the space station at 6.32 p.m., perform a deorbit burn at 9 p.m., and then uh, target uh, Kazakhstan steps for the landing at 9.55 p.m. Okay, S4.
still seeing a view here from the mission control in uh, outside of Moscow, where the Russian flight controllers will be watching over tonight's activities as uh, the Soyuz MS-16, with its three crew members on board, makes its way back towards Earth for landing at 9.55 p.m. Central Time in Kazakhstan. Still waiting for the uh, crew that it is delivering to Earth to get inside and get its hatches closed. That should be taking place in about 15 minutes. Uh, they've been working steadily through their uh, checklist to get ready for that. And uh, currently, they and the International Space Station are traveling about 233 miles above the uh, Southern Ocean, just beginning to head northeast on this orbit around the Earth towards Indonesia. Space Station has been uh, in a period of time where it doesn't have uh, video or voice down link to the teams here on the ground, but it should be regaining both of those here in just a few minutes. Uh, it's currently in the nighttime portion of this orbit, as I said, heading northeast over the southern ocean towards Indonesia. Uh, but um, within the next, uh, next few minutes, it will be finishing up this dark portion of the orbit around the Earth and coming into the daylight hopefully giving us some good views of the space station and the Soyuz still attached to it as we head towards that uh, that hatch closing between Soyuz MS-16 and the space station scheduled for 3.10 p.m. Central Time, about 10 minutes from now.
Экипаж МКС ЦУПа Москвы СГ-1 по проверке комкодера. Сергей, просьба включить комкодер для проверки сигнала и канала. Хорошо. Спасибо. Well, continuing to be quiet today as the crew uh, on board the International Space Station prepares to say their final farewells and split up with uh, Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner on the Soyuz MS-16, while Kate Rubens, Sergei Rishikov, and Sergei Kudskrichkov stay behind on the International Space Station. We should be getting close to today's hatch closure. That's scheduled for 3.10 p.m. Central Time, though the time can fluctuate a little bit as the crew completes their steps in preparation for it.
Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1 for the camcorder. Go ahead. Could you please check if camcorder is connected? We uh, do not see the video. We have checked it out three times, and there is this green background. The same on the Mac as well. There is no image there. And the camera is on. Copy. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Four camera settings. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Four camera settings. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1 for, cam for camera settings. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1.
Station Moscow calling on Space to Ground One. Station Moscow on Space to Ground One. Station Moscow on Space Ground One. Still listening in, waiting for uh, the hatch closure that should be coming up any time now. Uh, crew on board is going to be splitting up with Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Av Ivan Wagner heading home tonight on their Soyuz MS-16. Scheduled to be closing those hatches about this time, leaving behind Kate Rubin, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudzbirchkov. Right now the uh, space station is passing 260 miles above the Philippines and will be skirting just along the coast of Japan in the next few minutes as it moves into the daylight portion of this orbit, hopefully giving us a little bit better exterior views and uh, if we get lucky, perhaps some interior views as the hatches are closed as well. See the video now. Yes, we have just checked it out on a different camera and uh, we still have the same image. Okay, so you have installed a different camera and uh, you, you are still getting the same uh, image. Still standing by for tonight's hatch closure that was scheduled to take place about 3.10, about five minutes ago. Uh, that does fluctuate a bit as the crew works through the the timeline, the steps that they need to do before that hatch. those hatches are closed between the space station and the Soyuz. Also heard a little bit of um, talk between the... 
the crew in the ground about uh, some trouble with the video that would normally give us the the views that we would see inside the space station of Hatch Closure. Uh, we'll stand by and, and hope that they're able to get that uh, sorted out, but uh, we'll continue giving you updates as as we uh, as we get them on um, the status of the hatch closure. This is Moscow. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1, Sergey Rizhikov, please respond. Station Moscow on Space to Ground 1. Go ahead. Sergey. For camera settings. Yes, go ahead on Space to Ground 1. Space to Ground 1. Video and audio ODF, page 176. Could you please implement step three, send the commands per your uh, onboard instructions? Did you copy? Please repeat the pages. Could you please repeat page numbers 176, 176. Number three. Step three.
Once Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Venetian, and Ivan Wagner do close the hatches, that'll be the next step uh, before they then undock from the International Space Station. That's scheduled for 6.32 p.m. Central tonight. Anatoly, one more time. 176, step three. Step three. Which page? Uh, what page is it? Six. Page 10.2. 10. 10. And this is sheet video, one, audio. video and audio of uh, SM. Service module. Crew still troubleshooting the uh, video, the camera, video camera that normally would uh, provide us a view of uh, tonight's hatch closing. That was going to take place about 10 minutes ago, but we're still waiting for uh, the crew to get those hatches closed. Once they do, again, that'll be the, the first step on uh, tonight's journey for a landing in Kazakhstan at 9.55 p.m. Central Time. Once they've undocked, they will have spent 196 days at the International Space Station over the course of Expedition 63. Chris Cassidy was commander of Expedition 63 and just yesterday handed over the uh, keys to the space station to the Expedition 64 commander, Sergei Ryzhikov. Ryzhikov arrived at the space station just a week ago along with NASA's Kate Rubens and Roscosmos's Sergei Kuzbirchkov. Please close the hatches through the specified time. It must be done. Copy. Irkuta, this is Moscow. Station Moscow. On space to ground one. Send the command to close the hatches now. Station Moscow on space to ground one. Please respond. We're standing by for your confirmation. The crew on board the space station con continuing to have uh, trouble with the video camera that would normally be providing us video of tonight's hatch closure. Uh, the team on the ground in Moscow just telling them to go ahead and forego that for the night so they can get on with the actual process of closing the hatch. So we will be standing by to hear the updates um, from the teams on the ground as they watch those uh, watch their their uh, systems that they can see here on the ground for confirmation that those hatches are closed and we'll let you know as soon as we've got that. Irkutte, this is Moscow. Go ahead and space the ground one. We're standing by for your confirmation uh, about hatch uh, closure. Uh, crew has closed the hatches and we're closing ISS hatch now. Copy.
And we do have confirmation here on the ground now that the Soyuz side of the hatches are closed. That took place 3.24 p.m. Central Time as the uh, shuttle, or the Soyuz and station were flying 262 miles above the Pacific Ocean uh, east of Japan. Again, uh, the Soyuz side of the hatches are now closed. We're waiting to hear also that the space station side are closed, but that is a, a good step forward on tonight's timeline. Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1, ISS hatch is now closed. Copy, thank you. We're working per page, uh, inaudible. Please report on the commands you sent. Will do. And that confirmation that hatches on both sides of the vehicles are now closed, but the uh, Soyuz hatch closing officially coming in at 3.24 p.m. Central, and now the space station hatch is closed as well. That again is the first step of tonight's journey with uh, Expedition 63 Commander NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy on the Soyuz side of the hatch, along with his crewmates from Roscosmos, Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner, now ready to undock from the space station and begin making their way home for a landing at 9.55 p.m. Central Time. We are activating F-15. Twenty-three, twenty-seven, thirty. But we have a lot of interference. D7 command. Oh no, not yet. Twenty-three, twenty-seven, fifty-five. D7 command. Copy. Indicator for hatch closed is illuminated. D8. Yes, 23-28-18, D-8 command has been sent, copy, S-11 is not illuminated, S-16 now, 23 28-38, now that we have confirmation that the hatches between the two vehicles are closed, and again, the uh, Soyuz hatch closure came at 3.24 p.m. Central Time, we'll be taking a break while leak checks are performed until closer to the time for the Soyuz undocking from the station's POISC module. The slight delay in the hatch closure is uh, not unusual and won't affect the schedule for tonight, so we are planning for an undocking at 6.32 p.m. Central Time, which means we are going to be planning to come back for an, our undocking coverage at 6 p.m. on the dot. After that, the Soyuz will perform a few systems tests and fire its thrusters to move away from the space station and out of view. So we'll take another break and come back at 8.30 p.m. Central for the Soyuz's 5 minute and 20 second deorbit burn. That's scheduled for 9 p.m. Central Time. And from that point, we'll stay on until the crew has landed and is out of the vehicle. Landing again, again is scheduled for 9.55 p.m. Central Time. So that is the lineup for tonight. Uh, so we hope you'll stick with us and come back at 6 p.m. Central for the undocking coverage of Soyuz MS-16. This is Mission Control Houston.